Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is one of a series of videos about analog electronics, and you can find the master index here. In this video, I'm going to talk about uh, how to power your project. Now, when you're first getting going, uh, you're not going to have a whole lot of equipment, and so the first thing that you're probably going to use to power your projects is batteries. And believe it or not, this is actually a pretty good way to power things. Uh, it, uh, it, especially when you're getting going, it kind of exposes you to uh, a couple uh, issues that you wouldn't normally have, uh, which is uh, you're running your project in all kinds of different voltages because the batteries slowly die. Uh, despite that, uh, batteries are pretty good because they can put out a decent amount of current and they have no noise. Um, noise is a bit of a problem with certain power sources. Uh, but you'll quickly find that you're going to be spending an arm and a leg on batteries all the time if you keep working with batteries. So uh, the next thing you might want to do is move to a power supply like this one here. Uh, this is something that I built a long time ago and I just never got rid of because it's come in useful from time to time. Uh, I think I built this with maybe 20 or 30 bucks worth of stuff from Radio Shack. And uh, it has two banana plugs, uh, red for positive, black for ground, uh, power switch, and the dial that allows you to dial in the voltage that you want. And uh, this is a pretty decent uh, power supply. I think I designed it so it could put out about an amp um, at any of these voltages. Um, so uh, I'm probably going to do a video later on about how to make one just like this because this is such an inexpensive way. It's a, it's a good thing for a beginner to make. Um, other ways that you might... Um, where did I put them? <laughs> that you might power things are with, uh, a lot of people call these wall warts uh, or power adapters. Um, and there's two basic varieties of these. You're going to have ones that are unregulated or possibly regulated but not very well. Um, these ones tend to be bigger and clunkier like this one. Um, and then you have switching uh, regulators that tend to be pretty thin like this. Uh, they might, a lot of cell phones have these. It's becoming more common to have ones like this because I think it ends up being a little bit cheaper these days. Uh, but there's still quite a lot of these out out there. And you will see on a uh, non-regulated one, you're going to see output, uh, like this one's 9 volts DC. Let's see, maybe you can see it in this. I don't know if you can read that or not. Uh, 9 volt DC at 900 milliamps and uh, that is sort of a lie. Um, it can put out 9 volt DC but open circuit this is going to be a higher voltage. Uh, it might be up around 12, 13, 14 volts um, and it can put out 900 milliamps. I think maybe when you're drawing 900 milliamps it drops down to 9 volts. So the more current you draw, the lower the voltage ends up being. On the other hand, a switching regulator like this one, uh, let's see if I can get it there. This one's a 5 volt DC 2.3 amp. So this one packs a lot more punch as far as current than my other one did. Um, and this one's going to put out more or less exactly 5 volts uh, all the time. Uh, and the uh, noise characteristics of this one will be that it will probably have a high frequency noise um, and we'll talk about noise later um, but basically there'll be a little bit of ripple in your voltage and it'll be at a very high frequency. This one uh, I haven't explained all the uh, uh, terminology that I'll, I'll get to how something like this would work in a future video, but basically it's taking the sinusoidal wave of uh, your AC power and rectifying it 
uh, using a half or a full bridge rectifier and then it's smoothing it out uh, with a capacitor if it's a good one. If not, it might just be giving it to you straight, but uh, uh, it, you're going to have some ripple in this and it's going to be a higher voltage. So just be aware of that. If, you could, if your circuit can only tolerate, say, 5 volts and you have one that's clunky and heavy like this one uh, and it says a 5 volt output, be very wary. Measure it with a uh, multimeter before you go connecting it to your circuit. Uh, another possibility is a switching power supply like this one. Uh, you can get these in computers. Uh, you can't get one like this in your uh, computer anymore. This one's from an Apple II Plus that I uh, retired from my dad's computer years and years and years and years ago um, because it put out a nice, uh, I think, 5 and 12 volts. Yeah, these are kind of nice. Computer power supplies put out positive and negative voltages. So this has a positive and negative 5 volts plus a positive 12 volts all in one nice little convenient package with a switch. Um, these days you have to do a little bit more with computer power supplies because they sense whether or not uh, the, the computer's on or not and they won't put out anything if it isn't. Um, so that's another option. And then finally you work up to things like this and this which are uh, professional level uh, power supplies and on these you will have uh, this one happens to be a triple output supply so it can put out uh, a variable voltage from 0 to 30 volts and this one can go up to 3 amps on the on two of them actually all, all three are up to 3 amps two of them I can vary the voltage and then this one right here is just 5 volts out um, so uh, features that you're going to um, see on a power supply at a bare minimum are you're going to have, and I'm looking at my preview monitor and I've got everything backwards here, but I believe this is my voltage adjust. Yep. So you can see right here, here's my voltage. And then uh, this one right here is my current. And um, right now I'm, I don't have it connected to anything, so uh, my current is just zero. But if I were to connect up a circuit, and, and the way that you would connect up is you'd have wires like this that have a, uh, let's get that in the picture there, a banana plug. And um, you would just plug them in like this. So black is going to be your ground or your negative out. Um, red is your positive voltage and the green will be halfway in between them and be if you are using it as a positive and negative source then the green will be halfway um, I'm going to short across my supply now uh, just to show you one other feature um, at this point I'm actually I should go out here okay so take a look at the voltage here um, I'm not drawing any current so it's sitting at 7.1 volts but if I short across my uh, this wire here now you can see I'm drawing 0.56 uh, amps and my voltage has dropped down to zero so what this is is uh, better power supplies will allow you to limit the current through your power supply and I can adjust that so let's say I want to limit it to just one amp uh, I can just dial that in and uh, in order <laughs> it's, it's kind of counterintuitive it is putting some voltage through there but not very much uh, but one amp is flowing through uh, and this can be a safety feature uh, I can't tell you how many times when I was getting going uh, things that I were working on or that I was working on went up in smoke and a power supply like this would prevent that uh, because I was working with batteries and like I said batteries can pack a lot of punch so if I were to short these together I could get several amps out of them and several amps through many electronic components is a uh, big no-no um, so uh, 
you've got ones like this, and then uh, you've got ones like this that are basically the same thing. This one, uh, I'm not showing on it because it has a fan and it's noisy. Not too noisy, a little bit noisy. Um, and also it's a little bit harder to read this tiny little display. So um, when you step up to a bigger one, what you get is a little bit more uh, stable of a voltage. You're going to get the ability to uh, adjust your voltage uh, to you know a hundredth of a volt and have it stay there. Um, this one's sort of tricky. If I uh, if I go to adjust my voltage, you know it's telling me 7.4, but it's not quite actually 7.4. So typically, when I needed a very exact voltage with this one, I would take my multimeter and hook it up to it and then adjust it. And uh, the readout on this wasn't so exact. The readout on this one's going to be very exact. Um, and you also get things like presets, so I can set it up so that I can just hit a preset and suddenly I'm running at five volts with a current limit of two amps. And then I push another preset and I'm at 3.3 uh, .3 volts with a limit of 50 milliamps. Um, so uh, one final possibility that uh, you might choose is uh, solar panels. And uh, this is a little five watt solar panel. Uh, it's open circuit voltage is 17.1 volts. And it's short circuit current is uh, 310 milliamps. Um, so I think if you multiply those together and I didn't do it before I started shooting this video, you get something greater than five watts. Uh, I'll get to that later too. Volts times amps is watts, but uh, this is five watts at power max. We'll get to that. Uh, one thing to know with solar panels is uh, if you have, well, let's start with this. Each cell in a solar panel will typically put out about a half a volt. So to get something useful for your circuit, you're probably going to need at least three cells in series which means that they're connected positive, negative, positive, negative, like that. Um, the trouble with solar panels is that if you shade, if I took this panel and I shaded just that cell, right, well, I've got a couple fingers in the way, but just shaded one cell, uh, the whole current output of the panel would just plummet. And so every cell needs direct sunlight in order to be producing a usable amount of power. Um, and uh, this panel actually is a bit of a dud, as you can see on that cell right there. I bought this one and uh, it showed up with a cracked cell. So this only puts out about two and a half to maybe three watts of power. Um, and you're, you're just limited by the smallest cell in your string. Um, but if you've got a project that needs to run outdoors, and you have lots of sunlight, then this is a perfectly viable way to power it. So those are a few different ways that you can power up your projects. Uh, if you found this video useful, go check out my other videos. And uh, thanks for watching.